Gary Green is out at the geese again on his second day in the Orkneys. Today the boys have put the coffins away and headed straight to a field on a regular flight line to hopefully intercept the incoming geese and tempt them in with the decoys. We've done a recce yesterday for where we were going to possibly go for an early morning flight on some geese. I was up, I think, first, about six, a nice early shower, and uh, off we toddled, I think, about seven, a group of us down there. Uh, nice and cold, good and crunchy underfoot, plenty of ice there. Getting the decoys out was interesting. Got in position quite early. Magnus got us in a good spot where he knew the wind was correct for them to fly. And uh, yeah, and we're just trying to call in. Uh, Magnus is doing well on that. He's turned a nice few really close. The lads are really putting themselves out to, in these conditions to, to find us a bit of uh, you know flight in. It's, it's not easy. There was a lot of geese probably on the field, stayed on the field overnight on the grass again. When they get on that grass, the way they do them birds, they don't want to move, and I don't say as I blame them, to be honest with you. But a lot of uh, geese flying in off the sea, which was interesting. Didn't really want to come into where we were because there was such a big draw up the hill on the grass, so it was mainly going in there. Unfortunately, the rough weather appears to have taken its effect on the bird's usual flight pattern. A shot just inside the limit of Gary's range is the only one offered so far. The first opportunity comes to nothing, and it's back to the watching and waiting. And as the day gets lighter, their cover is only becoming less effective, so Gary and Magnus thicken it up with some reeds, forming a much more effective makeshift hide. Lovely morning, one of the best ones we've had. We had a bit of snow flurry, that was pretty crisp. The visibility was good though, you could, you could see it was in a good spot in the drain down there. But raw, very raw, not for everyone I should think. But, uh, I knew we weren't going to be forever down there. It's nice to think coming back to a nice warm dry place and good breakfast. It's interesting the way the weather changes so quick here at the minute. We're up and down the country, I know we're all having storms and gales and that, but here it just can be like really comfortable one minute and then just completely almost like arctic conditions the next. I did quite a bit of exercise, I was a bit crouched in there against that fence, got a bit damp, a bit tight, so just had a bit of a workout, different things, silly things I do just to keep you know, warm and it, that stayed with me, then I was okay, I didn't get cold again really, apart from the, the soggy feet, but you know, you're going to get that, that's how it is out there. The first one was reasonable, that was, I don't know, about 40 yards, like a pigeon shot almost, that, that was okay. Down as well, well done. Nice one. That's a better range. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. Well done. The other one's just back here. That's the first goose of the morning in the bag, thanks to some smart work from Gary, not to mention from the dog. The dog worked exceptionally well, felt a bit, bit guilty about putting him out for a few. Poor fellow, he's uh, shaking, could hear his teeth chattering at one point there. But no, he done a good job, old buddy. as it was first thing. Mind you, once you can't feel your feet no more, they're not cold, are they? <laughs> As the day warms up, the geese are starting to show more interest in the deeks. Then, Gary gets a golden opportunity. Go 
can't miss them when they're that close, otherwise you never live it down here. <laughs> it's just coming behind. A shot like that is enough to raise anyone's spirits, and the team are enjoying themselves now. Even the dog looks happy with that one. We settle back to await the next skein of incomers. It's been a stop-start morning, with many geese opting to camp out on the grass fields instead of coming in to attempt in feed. But some persistent calling does draw in another bird. Single behind you. It's Magnus's turn to get some sport as he swings through and puts his goose on the ground. As Gary reflects, geese can be tricky flyers and simply getting one overhead is no guarantee you'll be able to shoot it. I had a real tall one, which was, I think, dropped about 120 yards with the wind, pushed it right over, and it come down from a good height. That actually burst on impact when it hit the ground. That was a, a pleasing shot. That was dead in the air as well. But the lead on them is a very, uh, very strange. You think you've got it right, and you could be miles out. I think I put a bus length on one of them. I more or less doubled the lead I was given, and had a, you know, a dead, dead bird in the air at sort of 80 yards almost. So it just shows you what you need on some of them. They look slow, but they're really shifty. Oh, hit the ground hard anyway. Boston nice. Yeah, yeah I think they've accepted me now after that shot. Dropping <laughs> in. With one final retrieve, the morning's flight is complete. It's time to gather up the bag and collect the decoys, and that's when an expected snag hits. The deeks are frozen into the lock, and one southern soul shows he's made of stale stuff. Gary is clearly going to get wet on this one to fetch them out. But uh, I've got a real uh, double booty at the end when I had to go and break the ice out so we can get the line out from the decoys that had frozen right in, but we weren't going to get the line out and the decoys are far too valuable. The water's not deep, it's not dangerous there, so I just took my time and I was a bit damp in the boots anyway, so just busted some ice out so we could get our stuff back. With the decoys freed, and thankfully not too worse for wear, we can finally pack up and head back to the welcome warmth at base camp. So they're looking good, so all they stop splashing on them. Yeah, good variation of different types of variety of birds down there. A hell of a lot of stuff coming in there. So I think I had three or four goose there and a couple of free duck and uh, there was a couple of snipe shot as well but not by me but it was nice to see see them as well and then i tailed it home to a really nice breakfast a bit of warmth some dry underwear and clothes <laughs> yeah it was uh, that was really really good down there yeah good company the lads are good fun uh getting on well and you know, the sunrise, the extra bit of snow to, you know, pretty it all up. But the rawness, the real openness of it, you know, just um, totally different to anything I've experienced before. Been in some cold spots, but nothing like this. Mind you, I think that old fox box has been spoiling a bit with the eaters on this time of year. <laughs> Could have done with that out there or a cup of tea. <laughs> Good, sir. I'll let you through here, yeah? Oh, which is nice one. Oh, oh, oh. That's your feet. Barky. <laughs> <A> bit barky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, feet 
drilling that, but... Yeah, full of water. I could break it out of ice out. Yeah. We're right over the top. 